It starts off with passion, loving what you do and loving nice things. And I think a secret is being one buyer, so the vision's very clear, but bouncing off very creative people that have got a good sense of style and understand what medicines is all about. This is the Ryan Marketing Show and you're listening to episode 63 of 100. Today on the show, I'm joined by Trish Wallace from Madison's in Napier, a boutique flower and interior design store. Great to be here and have you on the show, Trish. Thank you, Ryan. Now, what are we going to be talking about today? Because, you know, walking through your store to get to the, the office out the back, it is a absolute emporium of phenomenally designed pieces of furniture and styling that if I had to select what was going to go into the store I think I wouldn't know where to start. Um, How do you know what to put in the store? I guess it's um, it starts off with passion, loving what you do and loving nice things and I think a secret is being one buyer, so the vision's very clear, but bouncing off very creative people that have got a good sense of style and understand what medicines is all about. So I think that combination makes medicines a bit special and uh, interesting. So part of it is what you're selecting to go into the store? Yeah, there's a lot of product out in that world, and um, yeah, I think uh, you still have to have a vision so that it all works, otherwise everything would be fighting things, and um, medicines also. You might have noticed when you came through the store, there's not a lot of colour. Ah, I didn't notice that. Mm. So it's about form and... um, each piece sort of does actually blend in because you won't see a big pop of colour. It's a colourful world out there. So when you walk into Madison's, I believe it's got a uh, serenity and you want to spend a lot of time just looking and touching and feeling. So that keeps us alive in the retail sector as in a store because people love coming into the space and um, special experience, and we hear that often. So it's more than just the visuals and the look, it's how your store and how the, the furniture makes people feel. I think so, yes, yeah. And yeah, we're lucky enough to have an amazing building to show everything off to its best. Yeah, there's a lot of natural light that comes in. Mm, yeah. It's a fabulous building. So for, for someone that's looking to uh, change the, their living room space and their home environment and they see things that in here that they think is just amazing, um, like with clothing, how do you know that when you take it home it's going to have that same feel? Yeah, well, we're, I mean, we this morning... Before you came in, I had been to someone's house and take photos, look, ask lots of questions, what they want to achieve. And with that, I come back to the store and obviously we can't have everything on the floor, so I have um, a lot of knowledge of where to source things from and who's got what and as far as suppliers and manufacturers are concerned. And then I'll get a bespoke story for them and present it to them. What we love doing is just getting the truck and getting it all set up after they've viewed, you know, they come back, this customer will come back, I'll show them what I'm thinking of. Always ask them the budget first because 
we all have a budget, but it doesn't mean to say you can't have a long-term plan. Because the one thing we don't want to do is make mistakes. But you know that next year, okay, I'm going to spend another 10000 And you know it's going to go with what you bought last year or the year before. So everything evolves. And just as we do, so do our spaces that we live in. And, yeah. So this truckload of furniture will go to this their house. And they'll sort of look and feel it for the for the evening and then say look we just don't like this and this but otherwise we love it right so they get to try some of the pieces absolutely. out absolutely it's does, a big investment yeah, yeah does that then make it a little easier on you understanding not just what they want it to look like but how they live now and how they want to live mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's like um well, it's just that investment as well. If you've got three young boys, you don't want to have a cream sofa. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but funnily enough, having always had a cream sofa, it's great because you can see when it's dirty and you can tend to it straight away. A black sofa will have the same amount of dirt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's. Um, I think people sometimes are scared off by colours, but obviously if you've got three young boys, you don't want white sofas but, mm. now from this building here which is you know, kind of the, the pinnacle of where I've seen medicines of all over the last few years from other locations you've yeah. been at um, you know going back to when you first started what got you into this as a profession uh, I was I trained as a florist so I was a florist in Auckland and had a couple of stores, which um, that was 25 years ago, and they're still going today, which is nice. Um, And I opened up a a furniture store doing home staging. So I started importing furniture to do home staging. And after 15 years, uh, I decided it was time for me to have a different lifestyle. Eight stores, a hundred show homes out, and it was time to slow down and enjoy life. So this here is you this, slowing down. This is me slowing down. This doesn't look like slowing down. Well, when I think when you've had eight stores and you've lived in Auckland and you come to Hawke's Bay and you just slowly build up a business, you sort of do it at a pace that's just enjoyable Mm. not without stress but enjoyable just the same over that period of time you must have seen a lot of changes in uh, purchasing behavior about how retail operates and the even the the vast availability of information around what style and design is out there how have you kind of navigated those changes in retail to make sure that medicine stays relevant? Um, Lucky enough that I've always travelled, so you see what trends are internationally, and the world's small now, so once upon a time in New Zealand, if we wanted some bathroom fittings or something, we would have to wait for, you know, 12 weeks for them to come in. I mean, those days are well gone. So you could go to a store in Paris and see some similar items, if not the same items as you'll see in Madison's. Because there's, yeah, there's um, a very big industry of furniture makers and fashion makers in the industry that show their um, latest ranges. So, like, shortly I'll be going to Singapore uh, in March, and that's the sort of like furniture fair so supplies from all over the world all countries as well and although a lot is made in China now the um, the companies aren't owned by Chinese they're owned by Italians New Zealanders have factories now in China and it's it's um, yeah rightly or wrongly because there's a lot of uh, discussion goes around you know where is it made 
but it can be quite often designed in New Zealand. But, you know, we might get a prototype made here and then get it made offshore. Oh, so you actually make some of your own furniture as well? So what are the ranges you've got that are medicine specific? Um, the um, American oak uh, trestle table, coffee table and dining table. So they're all right for our market. Interesting, mm. because that's kind of a, leads into another question I wanted to ask around uh, where New Zealanders are at with you know, fashion and design and styling. Are we closer to having and created our own style here with our own, you know, kind of vision or are we still, you know, enamoured and excited by what happens in the design hubs in you know, Italy, for example? I think that we've got, we lead the way in lots of design areas, like in fashion and furniture is no different. You know, we've got um, unique woods to, to New Zealand though and that's where it perhaps doesn't go global because, you know, Rimu or, and you know, timber is just getting harder and harder to source. So, um, you know, it's, it's just not as easy to make furniture here as it used to be, but we have got amazing designers here. Fantastic. Excellent. Particularly Hawke's Bay. So designed here, manufactured in China, and then put into homes around New Zealand. Yeah, just, just our first range. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I think that it's just finding the right thing for our market at the right price, because it is a little bit disposable nowadays but people still want something that's not antique that will see them through. And, you know, they love it. They love the feel of the wood, the look of the wood, the comfort of the chair, whatever it is, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just the room we're in now. This, um, you know, it just feels like there's some thought that's been put into it and maybe it's not something you'd immediately notice. It's more the, the feeling you have when you come into the space. Mm. Um, go for it. No, <laughs> I was going to ask a question around, you know, I wouldn't have thought I'd love this table in my home until I'm now, you know, sitting at this table. Um, so one of the challenges must be in your business to get people through the front door. Now you've got a, a floristry part here and you know, we just talked about your background as a florist. Um, what role does that play in getting people into the store? Hmm. I think flowers are part of, you know, like to me it's music, flowers, anything that, that you know, um, sort of gets the senses feeling good. It's really important and it just, it's an area that doesn't make a lot of money because down here, uh, the disposable dollar probably isn't quite what Auckland is, where um, you know people would come in and buy a hundred dollar bunch of flowers twice a week. Whereas here, the gardeners, they, the great cooks, that you know homemakers here, um, are quite different to Auckland homemakers. You can go to the grower here and buy a bunch of flowers. So what I love about Madison's flowers and the florist sort of industry is that you give flowers for happy occasions, sad occasions, and it's births, deaths and marriages, and then engagements and 21sts and um, I'm sorry and thank you. <laughs> and it's one of those things you don't have to spend a lot, but you give so much pleasure. And yeah, florists don't get given flowers, it's a bit sad. That is true. <laughs> um, my mum was a florist. Oh, okay. And on Mother's Day, I do give her flowers. Everyone does on Mother's from Day. From Oh, do you? And right. uh, she does appreciate the thought. Mm. Yeah. And it, it's just, it makes you feel loved and warm, and, and 
it's not like it has to be a big outlay, but it's, yeah. It's that thought. Yeah. And reaching those senses. Because flowers will remind you of of a time or, or you know, just, just like, um, you know, sort of special candles or music or all those things. Something that reaches your senses is important. Now, you obviously can't do all of this on your own. No, definitely not. And just before we started chatting on the, um, on the interview here, uh, we're having a brief chat with Renee, who's just started yep. as part of the business. Um, talk a little bit about the, the marketing side of it and, and how you want to kind of use her experience to grow medicines. Well... I think that it's really important to have that online presence. I mean, that's where we're headed. And Renee's uh, just fantastic, got a great eye, and straight away she's just logged into what Madison's is about because she's been a customer here and she's always loved coming to the store and she's a real follower of all the digital, you know, Instagram and Facebook and and online shopping so she has so much to offer and I just know she's going to take us where we need to to go and all, already she's getting so many likes and building that online presence um, and I don't believe it will be you know detrimental to how many people come in the store it'll be quite the opposite because I think a chair or bed linen is something you need to touch, sit, feel, see, um, but she understands that a lot of people are doing all of their sourcing online at night and um, seeing what's new and what's happening out there, so she's going to be a real asset to us. It's a, it's a very exciting area and I think for um, I guess the challenge and opportunity for a business like yours is that, yes, you've got beautiful um, products that will uh, lend itself very naturally to social media channels and digital channels. But the challenge part of it is the, um, the production values have to match exactly how much detail and work and effort goes into your store mm. and that can become quite a time sink so I think Renee is going to be quite busy. She is going to be very busy mm. and we're lucky because she's sort of got um, great photography skills as well so you know she'll I think what we have live here in Madison's she will be able to put that really nicely in digital. Excellent. So, mm. so I should be seeing more of Madison's in my social streams. I think so. I hope you uh, follow us on Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so on that, what what is in fashion now? What is in fashion now? Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but like in timber, lots of the timbers now are just sort of more honey coloured, more sort of um, Scandinavian look. It's quite, you know, quite nice. It's uh, easy to live with. It mixes with other timber colours and it's just a nice gentle colour that eases into any decor really. And, you know, we've got a lot here. And then we've got the, the sort of the sort of industrial steel and the brick. And the light would go beautiful with that. And once upon a time, everything was matchy-matchy. If you had a, you know, um, you'd have a Remu dining table, a Remu dining chairs, a Remu coffee table, um, a Remu sideboard. So... It, Wow. All, the, all the architraves and scotia and, and skirting boards in your house would be Remo. And now that's a car that actually takes light, it absorbs light. So, you know, the, the fresh palette and the lighter wood is just a bit more soothing. But it doesn't mean to say you can't 
make what you've got. Like, not keeping every single piece of um, old furniture, but just being really careful how you mix things. You can mix anything, old and new, antique. Mid-century is very, very popular. The retros come back. Everything goes in cycles. So, yeah, it's a very exciting industry to be in. And it's challenging too. Like you go into someone's house and you think, oh my word, okay. And you've got to give it a lot of thought. And you've also got to, to you know, be sympathetic to, well, my, this was my mother's and this was my grandmother's or, you know, however it goes, that they're special pe pieces to people. So it is about, you know, anchoring things with with a, a, a dark rug or something and you can make, you know, everything's a bit of an illusion, and, you know, sort of you've got to um, just be a little bit clever and you can pull things together and that's what we love doing. There must be yeah. a, a lot around actually creating space where no space was before to to provide areas for what you're introducing into it. Mm. Um, so is there a, a counsellor element where you're kind of guiding people into a, a direction to remove things as well before they start adding more in? Yeah, I think it's listening to people and asking the right questions because it's... Um, we all have different needs and we're all, we are all different, you know, and, and we use our spaces and our homes yeah. for, for different things, you know. What are some of those questions? Where do you start? Um, well, f let's talk about the house I went into today. Um, they're a blended family, which is so common now. So they've got five children be between them. And they've got half of the stuff from his house and half of the stuff from her house and they've got it here. So that, you know, what, through me asking the right questions, well, okay, you've got two lounges, so how do you see you using these rooms? Oh, this is going to be our room and the kids are going to have that. So are we going to put all of your older furniture into the room where the kids are so you're not going to be, you know on their case and, you know, making your own life miserable. That's a good idea. Okay, so, and it's just, it's just working your way through what their needs are, really. And, um, and then sometimes you walk into a room and it tells you what it needs. It's obvious that, you know, it's going to be used a lot because it's got the indoor-outdoor flow, so you want to bring the, the outdoors in and vice versa. And that's where we're so lucky in the Hawke's Bay. We are. I mean, our, our weather's amazing. <laughs> and that kind of brings us on to the, the pop-up shop you opened over the road, which is full of outdoor furniture. Yeah. How's that been? Like? How has that been received? Um, it's been an interesting exercise. We just took the space for it. A three month period just to feel our way because obviously you don't sell outdoor furniture all year round so we close it uh, at the end of um, end of this week it's been great and I've learned a lot from it have I made a lot of money from it no but I've learned a lot and I know what to do and I didn't want to disrupt our main shop mm. by having half of it full of outdoor furniture so mm, it's so it was good really exercise. it gave you a, a canvas to do a bit of testing yeah and yeah and so it's been it's been great in that sense yeah and um we've got a fabulous landlord here so we're going to as you can see the warehouse out here which is just incredible space and it sort of goes on so it's the same size as the shop again so what we'll do is we'll have an outdoor shop here and it'll sort of be opened up and um, yeah, a bit more casual, but it won't disrupt our main store. Mm. That's a great idea. Does that give 
will it have its own access as well or through the main? It'll be through the main. Yeah. 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 But it's, um, yeah. So we're just going to work through that so that when I go on my buying trip in March, I'll order our outdoor furniture range and it'll arrive in September. So we'll start straight away, sort of, you know, October, November, December, January, doing the outdoor furniture. Okay. And so I'll be looking for a, an exclusive Madison's range. But Excellent. It's, it's, been, it's been a good, um, you know, good exercise. Mm. Where would someone start if they wanted to start evolving their, their home space? Um, what's, the, what's the first step? Is it you know, what, looking around the house themselves, coming in here? What's the, what's the first natural step for them? I think most people, you know, like they might be sitting in the lounge suite and think, oh, this lounge suite is so revolting, it's so lumpy, or it's we've had this for 15 years and I just hate it. Now that might be the wife that say that, but you know, I mean, so there's just something that triggers that off. It might be um, your lifestyle's changing because your children are leaving home, because we have a lot of, our age of here is quite, it's, it's great. I mean, we're not specifically an age group. We're, I think, very much a lifestyle shop. Our furniture it seems to appeal to all ages. So we've got sort of the the thirties through to the sixties and seventies. Mm. So if you're sitting listening to this on your lounge suite now, stand up, <laughs> have a look at it objectively. <laughs> Put emotion to a side and think: Is this really the lounge suite it was 15 years ago? Um, um, and then give Madison's a call. Um, this has been a really interesting interview, Trish. Is there anything else I haven't covered that um, you wish I'd asked you? That no, I think you've uh, covered pretty much everything, and. Uh, I'll send you an email once I've done my buying trip and tell you what the next trends are going to be because it is very international and New Zealand's right up there, which is great. Mm. Sounds great. And uh, I look forward to seeing Renee using her social media and photography skills to be putting those posts into my feed as well for the new stock. Good. Thank you for this opportunity, Ryan. It's been good. You're welcome. Very easy to talk to. <laughs> I hope you need a new lounge suite soon. I uh, probably do now. <laughs> that sounds good. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Ryan. And one extra thing was House and Garden. Magazine's out, but magazines are still in for you, right? Well, it's a magazine that sits on the coffee table, and um, yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, Louise is uh, new to the bay. She came to school here, but, but came back, bought a gorgeous cottage and she's totally renovated it and um, she lives down the road from me. We'd never met but I knocked on her door, welcomed her to the neighbourhood in Te Wala, and um, she said, oh I've heard that you've got medicines. She said I was going to come and see you. So we're friends now and yeah I've worked through her whole um, furnishing and restyling of her home and it's beautiful. How does that get into house and garden? Do you, do you submit it to them or are they actually, are they coming to you saying what's coming up next? Well house and garden phoned me and wanted names of people who would be willing to, for cancer, you know, to open their homes. Oh. So they needed uh, 15 homes and I just gave um, Oh, about six people that I knew that, you know, people would love to see how they live and, and beautiful gardens or, you know, just just great homes that um, they've done a lot too. So that's how that all came about. So from one cottage in Tiawonga to House and Garden magazine, you're 
setting the styles yeah, across New Zealand. Yeah, and the nice thing is, of course, it's it's all going to you know Kent's foundation, and it's uh, eight hundred tickets are sold, and they go through all these homes are open homes. Oh, so you and can physically go through physically go through it. it. So they buy a ticket. Wow. Yeah, and um, so eight hundred people will go through the homes. That's got to be something to do if, if you're looking for inspiration. Um, as much as coming into the shop, just go through a few of these houses. Yeah. Oh, look, it's it's and it's not being nosy. It's just about wow. This is um, really inspirational to see. A funny little cottage transformed to this stunning, stunning home that just reeks of personality and, and love and yeah. Very done cool. a great job. Yeah. And that's February February the twenty fourth, twenty fifth. Hmm. Have to look it up. Yeah. If you like this episode, remember to subscribe for free on iTunes. Simply search for The Ryan Marketing Show in the iTunes Store.